we're about to go racing again for this now traditional four hours of Imola. The World Endurance Championship have revealed or realised the secret of the Imola racetrack as well. That was a tremendous race earlier on in the season elsewhere in the ACO rules ladder. And now there's a drama for the 66 JMW Motorsport Ferrari of John Hartzorn. It looks like he's not going to be able to make the start. They'll cross the finish line first of all. The start line is around the next right-hand kink. So they're still waiting for those lights to go out, which they do now. And we're racing for the first time, for the third time in the European Le Mans series in 2024. And is the 65 going to be able to lead into that first corner? Manuel Maldonado with his arms full into the Tamburello chicane. But he is able to fend off Ryan Cullen and Lorenzo Fluxa for the first time of asking. The 43 does indeed have to start the race from pit road. So Sebastian Alvarez came down pit lane and will be released very shortly. That was a little bit off track for Derek De Boer, and is this going to be a lead change in LMGT3? Not quite, although De Boer goes wide on the exit of Toza, and through, through in the gap goes Sarah Bovi back to the race lead in GT. And here comes Edgar on the inside of Kaiser. Can't quite do it, though. They had GT cars in front, including the LMGT3 Championship leaders, 55. That's Duncan Cameron for the opening stint. Side by side here between the Interpol car and the AOPITF car. Dust being kicked off up on the exit. It's super, super quick through this section, Johnny, before they get into the braking zone. Again, though, a wall of GTs, and you better get used to this because they're going to be in all the wrong places. Luca Giotto, who is a platinum driver, is going to out-muscle uh, Matthias Kaiser through the second of the Rivazas, and Johnny Edgar very nearly ran in the back of him because he was so slow out of the corner. But Edgar, thankfully, had he his head up and was wary to that fact yeah. and was able to dodge to the left-hand side, but that could have been calamity very early on in yeah. this four-hour race. Kaiser just dipped a rear tyre into the gravel there, didn't he? Back in the swing of things now, just about. And how about the Vector Sport car of Ryan Cullen, who's oh. had to be mean, majorly defensive there on Luca Giotto. Cullen runs across the gravel and has lost those two positions. Side by side here between the five and the 12. And that is Daniel Alley going through on Torsten Kratz to take the lead of the race at the moment. Trouble for the 27. That's the Rivazza gravel trap as well, isn't it? David, David Heinemeyer yeah, Hansen, David. who's perhaps run out of brakes, or did he have contact resulting in the car ending in the gravel at turn 18? Nobody with him there. He ran straight on. Got too deep into the corner, didn't he? Didn't have enough. And in the next 10 seconds... Here comes a full Five, course yellow. Eight, She's going to get him. She's going to get him. Five, four, Just as they three, come into the full two, course yellow, one, beautifully course done by yellow, Sarah Bovey. Full course yellow. And was that a bit of dropping concentration for Derek Boa, De Boer, knowing that the countdown was happening in his ears, either directly from Eduardo Frazier's or from his engineer? And Sarah says, well, we're not yellow yet. Full course yellow as Carl Bennett is running again, and that means we can go back to green, and Johnny Edgar's not going to waste any time at all in diving down the inside of Manuel Maldonado for second position on lap 45. Edgar tried that coming out of the previous full course oh, yellow. It's not yet done, though, because Maldonado now elbowing him wide at Toza. 37 from third. One. Lorenzo Fluxer running third on the road. Well, no longer, because he's got to find an opportunity here to... Turn the car oh. around and it's right in front of the WTM by Rinaldi car. Nothing between them again as the Kessel Racing Ferrari virtually pushing Axel Jeffries towards Piritella. They're going to arrive at turn nine together and round the outside. Can wow. he pull that off? Amazing manoeuvre wow. from Esteban Masson on Axel Jeffries. So many times this weekend we've seen cars running so wide that they drag two wheels and tyres through the gravel. 
Oh. And throw the 37 off again. And, and the, it's the four, four DKR car as well. So the 37 that had already spun when it was in the hands of oh, Lorenzo that's a big Fuchs. Hit. Big collision. And it happened way before that, but off goes. Paul, Paul Luke Chatter into tyres, thankfully, rather than colliding yeah. with bare metal and Armco barrier. Diving down the inside oh, there. Oh, contact there. So in the Formula Racing car, which is not on the lead GT lap, it's Conrad Lawson. That's not going to stop him getting ahead, though, of the grid motorsport car of Lorcan and Hannafin. Oh, and trouble there for Matt Griffin. Sideways he goes. Was that a side-to-side -side contact with another Ferrari 296? So oh, trouble. Now this could be an issue for the 77, the ben pole Viscal. sitting car. Bent Viscal, the Dutchman, has gone off a long way at Tozer corner, and the car is absolutely covered in gravel dust. Now, was he helped there, or has he ended up there with no brakes? But uh, all of a sudden, Proton Competition wondering how on earth the 77 is that far from the racetrack. Oh, and it was, he was almost hip-checked out of it by the decaying car. That was uh, in his own battle. Didn't look in the mirrors, they're afraid. And, there's, and the Duquesne car is off as well. So 30 Duquesne, Jean-Baptiste Simonauer, first of all, moving across the road because he wanted to perform an overtake into Tozer as well. Full course yellow is coming. Three, two, one. Full course yellow removed. Here we go. Back to green. And actually, Michel Gatting was very quick to respect, react to that, I should say. And into the Tamburello chicane. She is scampering away from the Aston Martin, which might have the merest of grazes. 43 does is able to slice by these two LMG T3 leaders then. Here's Michelle Gatting. Now the Aston Martin surely has got a better exit this time around, looking for the crucial inside line down at Tamburello, but Michelle Gatting is not going to allow Valentin Hasklo to get anywhere close to it. There was definitely contact there between the two of them on the main straight. There's a big scuff mark now on the Aston Martin and a huge squirm from the Porsche. We are t staying oh, totally glued. Sarah and Calderelli, is this the move? Daniel Sarah. Oh. No. <laughs> Sarah to the outside, Calderelli on the inside. Four. Watch this bomb explode. One. Oh, they, Lorcan Hannafin <laughs> thought about going to the left, then he thought about going to the right. Whoa, the Astons whoa, whoa. might. The Astons might change position, but the Porsche's going to stay in front. No, the Astons stay as they are. But it, will it be Mathieu Lehay or will it be Gillian Omrion to finish second? There's really nothing between them. Omrion is clearly the quicker car and he steps out to the left. That will give him the inside line into Tamburello. Unless Machu Lehay can... Got he him. got him, surely, yes. Great car placement as well. We're not very far away from Adam Ali. Adam Ali across the line in the LMP3 to take victory. It's Serra late on the brakes. He's ripped the rear of the Aston Martin off the car, but that doesn't matter. It'll actually mean it's a bit lighter now for Valentin Hasklo to pull it out of Rivatza and still to finish second. But Michel Gatting will win by a country mile compared to the most of the final bit of the stint as the bumper goes flying off towards the barrier. And that's what it means to everyone associated with Proton competition and with the Iron Dane project how on earth did Michelle Gatting get that car to the finish after Rahel Fry had done a stint and a half on the very same set of good years in LMP2 goes to Shami Lacey in the 65 Palace Racing crew along with Manuel Maldonado and his teammate Artur Leclerc Pro-Am goes the way of Algarve Pro Racing, LMP3 Euro International Adam Alley, Matthew Bell in the number 11 car taking another victory this season. Into Park Ferme, Charles Malesi and his teammates for Paris Racing. Sadly, Charles was judged to have sped up too soon after one of the full course yellows and a post-race penalty dropped them to fifth, promoting AO by TF to the race win. Which means now at the midway point of the season, they are just two points off the championship lead. Victory in LMP2 Pro-Am went to the car that qualified seventh of eight. Crichton Lentudis, Richard Bradley and Alex Quinn coming out on top of the pile.
A first win for the Algarve Pro Trio. AF Corsa taking second, Richard Mill by TDS third, and they are in reverse order of the top three in the points. Just three apart at the top, and Algarve Pro still very much in contention. Victory in LMP3 going to Euro Internationals duo Adam Alley and Matthew Bell. Yes. On the board and on the top step of the podium and probably feeling pretty tired. Virage taking second place, ultimate in third. And that win vaults Euro Internationals number 11 crew into a two point lead at the top of the points table midway through the season. The closest margin of victory was for the Iron Dames. Sarah Bovey, Rahel Fry and Michelle Gatting finally getting the win. And it might taste all that much sweeter because of how hard it's been. The Iron Dames were joined on the podium by Racing Spirit of Lemon and Kessel Racing, but a post-race penalty for the 57 Kessel Ferrari for passing under double-waved yellows handed third to the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. And while the Lambo crew may have missed their moment on the podium, those vital points do mean that they are still leading the championship from Racing Spirit of Le Mans, who are one ahead of the Iron Dames. So is the second half of the season going to be tight, close, exciting? You betcha. Imola had it all, but with three more races remaining, there is still plenty to play for. That is it for the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari. Next time we'll be at the awesome Spa Francorchamps on the 25th of August, and we will see you there. Let it be so big.